Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show where the aim of the game is to avoid obvious answers and find the obscure ones. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Um, hello, uh, my name's Luke and uh, this is my good friend Alex and we're from London. Couple number two. Hi, my name's Bert, this is my lovely wife Jill and we're from a little Cotswold town called Wooden Underedge. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm from Corby Glen in Lincolnshire. This is my dad, Nigel, and he's from Derby. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Ian. This is my daughter, Samantha. I live in Barnsley. She lives in Doncaster. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. We'll get a chance to chat a bit further, of course, as the show goes along. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's got the mind of a brain surgeon and the language of a tree surgeon. It's my pointless <laughs> friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Now, two returning pairs. Jill and Bert, welcome back. Got through to uh, the head-to-head -head last time. Played very, very well. Nigel and Sam, though, got through to round two as well, so we've got some good returning pairs here. Uh, round one today is a real... Um, listen, it's, a, it's, it's an exciting one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a real... Fun. It's a Bobby Dazzler, I think. Oh! It's a Bobby Dazzler. Excellent. Well, thank you. Um, also, James and Ellie didn't win the jackpot last time, which means we're adding another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot starts off at £4,500. There we go. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Now, as ever, it will be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. So just make sure your scores are nice and low and you've got nothing to worry about. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is ovine geography. <laughs> Can you all decide in your pairs? I know. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with over 5 million live <laughs> sheep as they could. Yep. Yeah, wow. I told you it was a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> I, like uh, the, I like the live bit. <laughs> yeah, we're looking, uh, we're looking for any country of the world, please, uh, with over 5 million live sheep, according to the uh, UN statistics released in July 2019, please. So any of those 50-odd countries in the world with over five million live sheep. Scientists don't know how many sheep there are in the world, because every time they start counting, they fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, well, that's very exciting indeed. Luke, welcome. Aren't you glad you got here for this round? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Um, now, tell us all about yourself, Luke. Um, so, I live and work in London. Um, I really enjoy films, um, so much so that I host my own film award ceremony every year. This is at where do you host it? At home? Uh, in my living room, yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> who, who, who comes along? I mean, it is just me that's there. Do you film it? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's published live on uh, social media. It's a webcast. Exactly, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thrilling. Thank you. Um, now, Luke. Yes. Sheep. Mm. Sheep. Um, OK. Five million. Five million. Mm. Is you that need a, a couple of dogs for that, wouldn't you? Yeah, a wouldn't it just? Um, mm. I think I'm. Gonna go for Argentina. Argentina, come on. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Argentina. Oh. That's right. <sighs> <sighs> Look at that, down against the 13. Great start to the round, Luke. Yeah, yeah go. <laughs> Very well played, Luke. Now, the United Nations, I don't know if they've got too much time on their hands, but uh, shall I tell you how many sheep there were in Argentina in that year? 14,842,957. <laughs> that is very specific. That is. But also, by the time you've stopped counting, surely some of the older ones have passed away. Yeah. And maybe some newer ones have been born. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, now, Jill, welcome back. Great to have you with us again. Head to head last time, you yeah. and Bert. That was exciting. It was. Um, remind us all about yourself, Jill. Um, I'm an office administrator. Indeed. Um, yes, and I work about 10 minutes from where I live, so See, that's it's nice. very nice. Do you, do you walk to work sometimes? No, 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 no. no. Um, what do you like getting up to when, when work is done? Um, I like cooking, um, playing darts, that kind of thing, pub games. I like pub games. Okay. We like to quiz on a Sunday. We have a local quiz mm, that we go to good. our local pub, so nice. we enjoy that on Sundays. 
Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, Jill, sheep. Mm. <laughs> mm. Five million sheep. Mm. Um, I think I'm going to play it quite safe on this one and go for Australia. I, I caution people against using the word safe <laughs> <laughs> for things that might be high scoring. That's not safe. Anyway, there we go. Um, I've said it, so let's see. Australia. How many people said that? Australia's right. It's 56. 56 for Australia. Yes, yeah, 72 million live sheep. Well, actually, 72,125,334 <laughs> live sheep. Uh, the most wool ever sheared from a sheep was in Australia. 40 kilograms of wool from one sheep. Bar bar. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. A sheep called Chris. <laughs> It'd be called Sean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> OK, now, Nigel, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Nigel. I'm now retired but I was um, in the RAF for 24 years and I worked with a medical equipment company for 20 years. What were you doing with the medical equipment company? Um, for the last three years before I retired, I was going around um, doing uh, complex uh, medical equipment assessments in people's homes. It's right. A very rewarding job, but yeah. very busy. I was doing probably 12 to 1,400 miles a week. Wow. Because uh, my, my area was... England. That was it, the and whole Wales. of England. Wow. I mean, I nice, Scotland. nice chance to get around the country. Certainly will have seen a lot of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> little segue, little segue into the round. Um, talking of sheep, um, what, have you got an answer, Nigel? Yeah, I, I, I have a rehash, because I, I was actually going to go for Argentina. I think I'm going to go for Australia's neighbour, New Zealand. <sighs> New Zealand, OK. Let's see, how many of our 100 people said New Zealand? Yeah, it's a big one. 71 for New Zealand. Here, yeah, there used to be 22 sheep per person in New Zealand. That's come down an awful lot now. Now it's just six. Because firstly, the population has grown up and sheep farming is really declining everywhere. Mm. Uh, New Zealand now, 27 million sheep. There used to be 70 million. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. Mm. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Ian, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Um, tell us all about yourself, Ian. Hi, um, I retired. Um, I retired a couple of years ago now. I used to work for the largest postal delivery service uh, in the country, handling uh, sort of business complaints and uh, looking after business customers who uh, were having problems. And now you've retired from that? Absolutely. Well, what do you get up to now? Oh you, oh, you must be so glad not to have people complaining in your ear the whole time. <laughs> yes. oh. um, I love photography and I also enjoy bird watching, so I like to mix the two. Very nice. What's the, what's the most exciting thing you've photographed? Um, I've seen quite a few interesting birds. Uh, the, the spoonbill was quite an interesting one. You didn't, they're, they're not the, the most common in the, where in the you, world. Where do you see that? Um, down in Norfolk. Very nice. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Good but stuff. My, my favourite birds are sort of nuthatches and things like that. The, the small birds that you don't see very often. Lovely. Just wait for them coming out. Very nice. Now, Ian, uh, what are you going to go for? We're looking for countries with over five million live sheep. I got on the strength of the first answer, I'm going to go for Chile. OK, Chile. Yes. Says Ian, sounds like a good answer. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said Chile. Oh, no! Sorry. <laughs> no, I think that was, that's exactly the right sort of way to play it, I think, Ian. Um, sadly, it's incorrect, though. Scores you 100 points. Uh, yeah, not on the list, uh, I'm afraid. Not over 5 million in Chile. Although lamb with chilli <laughs> is delicious. Mm, mm. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 13, Luke. What about that? Best score of the round so far, then up to 56, where we find Jill and Bert, up to 71, where we find Nigel and Sam, and then 100 is where we find Ian and Samantha. So uh, you're not way ahead, Samantha, but a nice low score would even things up from you. Uh, if we can do that, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So, Samantha, remember, we're looking for countries that have over five million live sheep. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, tell us all about yourself, Samantha. Um, yeah, so I live in Doncaster and I work at the museum there. Um, so I'm a community engagement officer. So I go out into the community with objects from the museum and speak to community groups about different topics. Uh, brilliant. Uh, brilliant. What sort of things have you got in your museum? Um, we've got a lot of Roman things because Doncaster is a Roman town. Yeah. Um, but it's all through history, so we've got mining things and, um, yeah. Wonderful. So a full, rich, 
tapestry of Doncaster's yes, history. Yes, all Doncaster's history. Wonderful. Now, there you are, high scorers at the moment. But a nice low score from you could turn things <laughs> around immediately. Um, yes, so I don't know if this is a bit of a dodgy one, but I'm going to go for Peru. Peru? Yes. Says Samantha. OK, <laughs> let's see how many of our 100 people... If it helps, Luke is nodding. <laughs> <laughs> He got 13. Let's see, Peru. How many of our 100 people said Peru? No red lines, you're the high scorers at the moment. Peru is right. Very well done, Samantha. 13's our lowest score so far, and you pass it. Down that goes to one. Very well done indeed. Taking your total up to 101, just what we needed. You might well have done enough to keep yourselves in the game there. Well played, Samantha. Over 11 million live sheep in Peru. In Peru. Uh, now, Sam. Welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Sam. So I, I live in a small village in Lincolnshire and um, I'm currently a full-time housewife, but in the past I've been a deputy manager of a children's nursery that's run by a large children's charity. Very good indeed. What are your, what are your hobbies, Sam? <laughs> I think we, we talked about it last time. I've got a very large collection of elephants. We did. <laughs> we did. We did cover that. Yeah. I, I mean, what, what kind of volume? I mean, what does it take up? <laughs> Do you keep... Are they dotted around the house? Are they I, I in a... I think I've got an elephant just about in every room in the house, so much to my husband's disgust. <laughs> so, Sam, you're on 71. We have to get a score of 29 or less. I think I'm just going to have to pluck out a random country here. I think it's going to... Don't be too random. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Brazil. Brazil. Let's find out. How many of our 100 people said Brazil? Here is your red line. It's right. There you are. Takes it down to six. Very well done. Taking your total up to 77. You're into round two. Well played, Sam. Nearly 18 million sheep in Brazil. Now, the Brazilian uh, breed of sheep, the Santa Ines, uh, has no wool. It's literally bred for meat. So it has no fleece at all. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now, Bert. Welcome Hello. back. Thank you. Um, remind us all about yourself, Bert. Uh, work in an admin office uh, with the logistics for a company that supplies packaging and tableware for anything you find from a fast food shop through to a, a restaurant. So specifically catering? Yes. All, yeah. all aimed at catering? Because you know when you sometimes you go to a restaurant, and so, you know, some restaurants, they'll have amazing sort of curvy bits of square plate, plateware. Plateware. That's, that's what we call it, plateware. Um, and these are things that you have, and it's yeah. all on, it's a very specialist... Um, catering you, you can you could get it online, but um, yeah. we do tend to deal with specific chains as well. Well, that's fun. Yes, yes. Very nice. Now, Bert, you're on 56. You have to score 44 or less. Mm. 44 or less. <sighs> I've got to go a bit, take a bit of a chance here. Rather than going safe, I'm going to go Romania. Romania, says Bert. OK, here is your red line. Let's see. Is Romania right? And if it is, can it get you below that line? It is right. And you're through. Very well done indeed, Bert. And that goes to two. Taking your total up to 58. <laughs> Looking very strong once again, Bert and Jill. Well played, Bert. Yeah, they've got 9,875,500 live sheep, which makes me think they may have rounded it up to the nearest 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Alex. Welcome to Pointless. Uh, okay. Tell us all about yourself, Alex. So, I was born in Romania, so a little bit fascinated <laughs> about that answer. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Is that, that was going to be your answer. Yeah, that was going to be my answer. Oh. I was born there and then adopted by um, British parents, obviously. Grew up in Brighton. And then when I was 18, I went out and tried to find my birth mother in Romania. Did you? I did, indeed, yes. I did. Excellent. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, and uh, there's a documentary at the time about it. Yeah, because we managed to film it all on... Camera, obviously. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. This was an actual documentary that, that was seen on television, was it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, at the time, me and my friend just took a video camera out and then yeah. the BBC uh, got that picked footage and picked it up, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you've got a whole new family out there that you... you yeah, you, you so really I met, my, I met my uh, birth mother there and I go out to see her occasionally, so, yeah. That's nice. Very good. Now, Alex, you're on 13. 87 or less keeps you in the game. Countries with over 5 million live sheep. Mm. So, seeing as I can't say that, I'm going to go for one of their next door neighbours and say Hungary. Hungary, says Alex. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below this red line with Hungary. How many of our 100 people said it? Oh, oh no. Unbelievable. Oh, no. no. 
I'm so sorry. That scores <laughs> you 100 points, takes your total up to 113. Oh. That's a shame, isn't That's it? Yeah, there's only 1.1 million uh, sheep oh, in Hungary. No. Hey, mate, it's no Romania. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a whole bunch of pointless answers. Should we take a look at them? Uh, Azerbaijan is a pointless answer. Bolivia, Chad. You could have had Egypt, Ethiopia, Indonesia. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Turkmenistan, Yemen. The biggest score by a mile was New Zealand with 71, and Australia was the second biggest with 56. Now, uh, United States was the third biggest scorer on 30. The USA has 5,250,000 sheep. Sheep farming has virtually disappeared in the United States. Really? I did not know that. Wow. It's interesting, isn't it? So it's almost not on the list. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, OK, we find ourselves at the end of our first round. We have to say goodbye to Alex and Luke. I thought that from the outset, our most promising pair, you know, Luke setting us off with 13 there. Oh, and Alex, but for Bert. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> lifting that answer from your lips, yeah. as you were about to say it. Anyway, you're going to be back. And yes, I have every absolutely. hope that when you return, you'll be able to take it all the way through to the headshot and beyond. But in the meantime, thank you very much indeed, Alex and Luke. Thank, thank you. you. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it through the sheep round. Oh, uh, Samantha, our lowest individual scorer. Hats off to you. And uh, Jill and Bert, lowest combined scorers. Very good indeed. Oh, well, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is famous people. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Famous Jasons. Richard. I mean, if your specialist subject are sheep and people called Jason, you are having a great show so far. <laughs> On each board, we're going to show you six clues to famous people called Jason. Can you name the most obscure, please? Thank you very much indeed. So let's reveal our first board of Jasons, and here they come. Australian singer who played Pharaoh in the 2019 West End revival of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Hawaiian-born actor who played the title role in the 2018 film Aquaman. Former rugby league and rugby union player who scored England's only try in the 2003 World Cup final. Singer who had UK number one singles in the 2010s entitled Want to Want Me and Don't Want to Go Home. Fashion designer who created gowns worn by Michelle Obama at the presidential inauguration balls of 2009 and 2013. And batsman who broke the record for the highest one day international score by an England player when he hit 180 against Australia in 2018. I'm going to read those all again. Australian singer who played Pharaoh in the 2019 West End revival of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Hawaiian-born actor who played the title role in the 2018 film Aquaman. Former rugby league and rugby union player who scored England's only try in the 2003 World Cup final. Singer who had UK number one singles in the 2010s entitled Want to Want Me and Don't Want to Go Home. Fashion designer who created gowns worn by Michelle Obama at the presidential inauguration balls of 2009 and 2013. And batsman who broke the record for the highest one-day international score by an England player when he hit 180 against Australia in 2018. There we are. OK, Jill. OK, Alexander. Yeah, right, um, Jason's. There's one there that I know, but I'm not quite sure of the surname. Um, so I'm going to go for the top one, and I'm going to say Jason Donovan. Jason Donovan, says Jill. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jason Donovan. It's right. 68 for Jason Donovan. Yeah, and of course, the first time round, he played uh, Joseph in that and yeah. uh, had a number one hit with Any Dream Will Do. That's the last of his four UK number one hits. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Nigel. Which of the Jasons is taking your fancy here? I've gone completely blank. And I should know the third one, Dale. Uh, I, I can't... Jason Owen. I can't remember. Third one down. For the third one down, for the rugby player, Jason Owen, says Nigel. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jason Owen. No bad luck, I'm afraid not. Jason Owen scores you 100 points. Uh, yeah, not Jason Owen. I'll give all the correct answers at the end of the pass and uh, hopefully... Um, you won't recognise the names, so that would make it easier. OK, now then, Ian, that board's all yours. Do you want to fill it in for us? I'm afraid I can't. I ought to know the third one also. 
but uh, unfortunately, I can't remember his name. Um, the one I'm going to go for is the bottom one, the batsman who broke the record for the highest one-day international score, I believe, is Jason Roy. Jason Roy, says Ian. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jason Roy. Is right, it is Jason Roy. And that takes you down to 10. Very well done indeed, Ian. Lovely score there. Yeah, very well played, Ian. Also threw that last ball for the uh, the last wicket in the World Cup cricket. Uh, very nicely done. Um, now, so Jason Roy is right now the the name that you're both trying to look for for the the third one down, the rugby player, Jason Robinson. Jason Robinson is the answer. That would have scored 12 points. Um, the actor, the Hawaiian-born actor, is Jason Momoa. Would have scored you 33. The singer is Jason Derulo. That would have scored 18. The best answer on the board is the fashion designer, and that is Jason Wu. And he would have scored you six points. That's a tough board, isn't that it? That is a tough Even board. Even though you already know 50% yeah. of every answer. Yeah. It's, uh, that's a, tri yeah. that's a tricky one. It's tough. kind of harder than sheep yeah, in some ways. Tough. Oh, Jason's, Jason's sheep, yeah. yeah. Let's hope the next board is easier. I do hope so. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Ten, the best score of the past. Very well done indeed there, Ian. Then up to 68, where we find Jill and Bird. Up to 100, where we find Nigel and Sam. Sam, you know what you have to do. Good luck with it. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more Jasons up on the board, and here they are. We've got Hollywood actor who played the lead role in the Transporter films and Lee Christmas in the Expendables franchise. Official photographer at the christening of Prince George in 2013. Former team captain on 8 out of 10 Cats who began presenting the game show What Would Your Kid Do in 2018. British track cyclist who won three gold medals at the 2016 Rio Olympics. Member of Take That who left the band in 2014 and Welsh TV and radio presenter who took over as host of the BBC results show Final Score in 2013. I'll read those again for you. Hollywood actor who played the lead role in the Transporter films and Lee Christmas in the Expendables franchise. Official photographer at the christening of Prince George in 2013. Former team captain on 8 out of 10 Cats who began presenting the game show What Would Your Kid Do in 2018. British track cyclist who won three gold medals at the 2016 Rio Olympics. Member of Take That, who left the band in 2014, and Welsh TV and radio presenter who took over as host of the BBC results show Final Score in 2013. There we go. Samantha, we come to you first. And if you can score 89 or less, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Um, so I'm going to go for the member of Take That who left the band in 2014 and say Jason Orange. Jason Orange, says Samantha. Let's see how many of our 100 people said. Jason Orange, there's your red line. It's right and you're through. Very well done. Down he goes to 72. 82 is your total. Yeah, after the group's first split, he went and uh, did his A-levels at South Trafford College. So he's a huge he? star, you know, massively famous, yeah. wealthy, and went, yeah, went and did his A-levels. I imagine he did very well. You would have thought so. He seems yeah. bright. Nice chat, uh, yeah. Jason Orange. Yeah, good for him. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, uh, Sam, you're our high scorers. Oh, we yes. need a low score. I don't think I can give one. <laughs> um, only one I can go quite confidently with is the Hollywood actor is Jason Statham. Jason Statham says, Sam, no red line views, you're the high scorers. Let's see how far down the column we get with Jason Statham. It is Jason Statham. Not a bad score, actually. 42, taking your total up to 142. Yeah, he's built the most extraordinary career, Jason Statham, hasn't he? He started in some of those Guy Ritchie movies and just people just love him. He's in Fast and Furious movies. I mean, he's proper box office, Jason yeah, Statham. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much indeed. Now, Bert, are you squirming here? <laughs> yes, the two answers I know have both gone. <laughs> OK, now there's that board. Look, you're on 68, 73 or less gets you through. Just do some thinking out loud here, just in case there's anything. Nothing is coming to mind at all. I'll go for the Welsh TV and radio presenter, Jason Owens. He gets about Jason <laughs> Owens. <laughs> uh, um, OK, Jason Owens, says Bert. There is your red line. Let's see, Jason Owens. I'm afraid not, Bert. 
scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 168. Yeah, sorry, Bert. It's been on this show, hasn't he, a few times. Jason Mohammed is the answer there. He would have scored you nine points. Uh, the biggest scorer left up there is the team captain on eight out of ten cats. Uh, Jason Manford. Jason Manford would have scored you 23. The British track cyclist is Jason Kenny. He would have scored you 19 points. And the toughest answer on the board is the best answer. The photographer is Jason Bell. Very well done if you said that. Four points if you did. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, at the end of our second round, the pair with their high score that we're saying goodbye to, I'm afraid it's Bert and Jill, head-to-head -head last time. I'm so sorry. This is where we have to say goodbye to you. It's been lovely having you on the show. Um, thanks so much for playing, Bert Thank and you. Thank Jill. You. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Well, congratulations, Ian and Samantha, Nigel and Sam. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for that rather decent jackpot, which stands currently at £4,500. <laughs> How is it? So it's a fathers and daughters head-to-head. Oh, head. that's, that's nice, isn't nice. it? That's nice. And a Sam and a Samantha. Yeah. Um, but anything could happen here. We've had good answers from both pairs and now you're pooling your knowledge. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns trees and shrubs. Richard. Uh, we're going to show you five pictures of trees and shrubs now, which you must identify. We'll also show you another picture, which is a visual clue to their name. Ooh. Very exciting. OK, so trees and shrubs with visual clues. Here they come, five of them. We have got A... B... C. D. And E. Uh, five trees and shrubs with clues. Um, in and Samantha, you're our low scorers. So you get to go first. Oh, you're leader. Oh, you have to give that go. Um, I think we'll take C, please. Uh, birch. C, birch. Say so Ian and Samantha. Now then, Nigel and Sam, over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you want me to stay? Yeah, go for B. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think we'll go for B. Would that be which hazel? Okay, B, which hazel? Witch Hazel. OK, so we have Birch and Witch Hazel. Ian and Samantha said Birch for C. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Birch. Birch is absolutely right. That's a great art. Oh, look at that, down to two. Very good indeed, Ian and Samantha. Uh, Nigel and Sam, meanwhile, have gone Witch Hazel for B. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Witch Hazel. No, I'm afraid not which hazel, which means, Ian and Samantha, after one question, you're up 1-0. Uh, yes, yeah, nice thinking, though, but these clues are much more on the nose than that. That's simply Broom. <laughs> uh, Broom would have scored you 37 points. Um, the first one, I think that would score. You've got to hope 98. You would hope so, wouldn't you? It scores 66 points. <laughs> I mean... Wow. Oh, there it is. Next one along, D. Plain. It's plain, yep. We'll score 28. And E. Box. Box. It's simpler than it looks, isn't it? 36 points for that. Uh, and the birch, birch is the best answer on the board by a mile. Did you recognise it from the, from the leaves or from Thora birch? I thought it was birch from the leaves, but I recognised Thora birch as well. Beautiful. Great yeah, answer. Man. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your second question. Uh, Nigel and Sam, you have to win this one to stay in the game, so good luck. Our second question today is all about the man who was in films. Yep, I'm going to show you the titles now of five films that begin uh, the man who, but we've missed out the final word from each title. Can you tell us what they are, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our the man who films. Here they come. 
The Man Who Shot Liberty Blank, James Stewart, John Wayne, 1962. The Man Who Fell to Blank, David Bowie, Candy Clark, 1976. The Man Who Haunted Blank, Roger Moore, Hildegard Neal, 1970. The Man Who Knew Blank, Dev Patel, Jeremy Irons, 2015. And The Man Who Wasn't Blank, Billy Bob Thornton, Francis McDormand, 2001. I'll read those again, just the titles. The Man Who Shot Liberty Blank. The Man Who Fell to Blank. The Man Who Haunted Blank. The Man Who Knew Blank. And The Man Who Wasn't Blank. Nigel and Sam go first. Uh, okay, we're going to go for the man who shot Liberty Valance. The man who shot Liberty Valance, say Nigel and Sam. Uh, so, Ian and Samantha, do you want to talk us through the other, the man who's? I'm afraid not. The only one I know is the second one down, um, the man who fell to Earth. The man who fell to Earth. So we have Liberty Valance and Earth. Nigel and Sam went for the man who shot Liberty Valance. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. There we are, 41 for Liberty Balance. <laughs> Ian and Samantha, meanwhile, have gone for the man who fell to. Let's see if it is the man who fell to Earth. It is Earth. At, ooh, that's a high score, 69 for the man who fell to Earth. Nigel and Sam, well done. Back in the game after two questions, it's one all. Yeah, those are the top two scorers on the board. Might have been worth having a guess, if you could. The man who haunted... I don't know that ...himself. One. Ooh. Ooh. Clever trick if you can do it. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Uh, 13 points for that. Um, this is a tough one. The man who knew... You have to know the film, really. I, was, you, I won't say too much, but it's not that, no. is it? Infinity. Infinity. The man who knew Infinity would have scored six. This is one you probably could guess. The yeah. man who wasn't, wasn't there. The man who wasn't there. And that would have scored 27 points, the Coen Brothers film. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, here comes the decider. Whoever wins this one, obviously, goes through to the final to play for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question today is all about things that include every vowel once in their name. Richard. Yeah, all the answers here have each of the vowels once and once only in their name. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues. Here they come. Song with which Sandy Shaw won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1967, radioactive chemical element with the symbol SG, vegetable in the brassica family of plants that bears large, edible, creamy white flower buds, alternate one-word name for the California redwood tree, and English actor nominated for Oscars for A Man For All Seasons and Quiz Show. I'll read those clues again. Song with which Sandy Shaw won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1967, radioactive chemical element with the symbol SG, vegetable in the brassica family of plants that bears large, edible, creamy white flower buds, alternate one-word name for the California redwood tree, and English actor nominated for Oscars for A Man For All Seasons and Quiz Show. There you are, uh, Ian and Samantha, you will go first. I'm going for the uh, alternate one-word name for the California redwood tree is the sequoia. The sequoia, say Ian and Samantha. Now then, Nigel and Sam, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Um, the top one is Puppet on a String. My husband will never forgive me for not knowing the second one because he's a chemist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going to go for the vegetable as cauliflower. OK. Cauliflower. So we have sequoia and we have cauliflower. Ian and Samantha went for sequoia. Let's see if that's right for the giant redwood tree. It is sequoia. That goes down to 15. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Nigel and Sam, meanwhile, have gone for cauliflower. Let's see if that's right for the brassica vegetable. Cauliflower is absolutely right. And that goes down to 49, which means very well done indeed, Ian and Samantha. After three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Very nicely played. The, uh, the top answer is the highest scoring answer as well, the Sandy Shaw song. It's Puppet on a String. 57 points for that. I don't think your husband will mind too much. It's quite an obscure um, element. It's Seaborgium. Would have scored 14. And the best answer on the board is the English actor. Should I tell you? I can't remember his name. Paul Schofield. Paul Schofield, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And that would have scored nine points. Very well done if you said Paul Schofield, I hope. There we are. Thank you very much.
Indeed. Uh, so, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. I'm afraid, Nigel and Sam, it's you. It's been lovely having you on both shows, uh, but I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. You played very well across the show, but uh, thank you very much, Nigel okay. and Sam. But for Ian and Samantha, it is now time for our pointless final. Well, very well done, Ian and Samantha. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophies. Now, you get a shot at today's jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £4,500. <laughs> well, very well done. I'm <laughs> say very well done. Your first answer, way back in the sheep brand, if you remember. I remember. Uh, scored 100 <laughs> points. So, wouldn't it be lovely if we could just atone for that with a pointless answer in this last round and take that jackpot home? What do you want to see come up? Um, something... Geographical, maybe, historical. Um, OK, well, you know what happens. Four things will appear on the board. We just have to hope something there appeals to you. Today's four are... Prog Rock, Shakespeare's Tragedies, Finals in American Sport and A Star is Born casts. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I could go for Prog Rock. Oh. I'm happy to go with you because I'm not sure on any of them, so... OK. I'm old enough to remember some prog rock, so I think we'll go for that. OK, prog rock. <laughs> OK, very best of luck. Here are your three questions we are looking for. Anyone who has ever been in the band Yes, according to the official list on uh, yesworld.com as of July 2019, we're looking for any track on Pink Floyd's album Echoes, the best of Pink Floyd, the double CD from 2001. Or we're looking for any of Rolling Stone's 50 greatest prog rock albums of all time, please. We're looking for any act which has at least one album on that list. So any act to appear on that list. So members of Yes, tracks on Echoes, and any act with one of the 50 greatest prog rock albums of all time. We won't accept Pink Floyd or Yes for that. Thank you very much indeed. As always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win the jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Well, I've got that album, so I ought to know some on it. Um, how about... Uh, set the controls for the heart of the sun. Um, come on, come on, come on. Brain death. Can I help you? No, well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the Court of King... What was that one, The Court of? I'm really, really, really struggling here. I can give you a couple of answers for the top one, but that'd be really obvious. Well, it's just stick one in as well. Rick Waitman and um, John Anderson. Ten seconds left. John Anderson is the thing. Yeah. So two pink play songs and, and John Anderson for first. Yeah. OK, that is your time up. What three answers can you give me? Right, we'll take one from the top one, the members of the S, John Anderson. John Anderson. Uh, tracks on Echoes. Set the controls for the heart of the sun. Set the controls for the heart of the sun. And from the bottom category, I'd like to go for King Crimson. OK, King Crimson. There we are. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Set the controls for the heart of the sun. Set the controls for the heart of the sun. Least likely to be pointless? King Crimson. King Crimson. OK, I'll pop that at the top. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then. And here they are. We have got King Crimson, John Anderson, and Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. Three answers up on the board there. One lovely big jackpot of £4,500. If one of these answers won that jackpot for you, what would you like to do with it? It's just about enough to pay for a reasonable holiday. I think, I think <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, a reasonable holiday. Um, and cruise. Very nice indeed. Samantha, what about you? Um, I am currently saving up to go to Las Vegas, so that would do nicely for that. OK, very good indeed. Well, very, very best of luck. Three good answers. Let's hope one of these wins that jackpot. King Crimson is your first answer. In this case, we were looking for Rolling Stone magazine's 50 greatest prog rock albums of all time artists. Uh, if King Crimson is on that list and is pointless, you leave here with £4,500. How many people said King Crimson? It's absolutely right. It just has to be pointless now for you to win that jackpot. £4,500 riding on this. Damn it, going to single figures with King Grimson. Still go for.
Not bad. Not bad for a first answer in the last round here. Four. But uh, not a pointless answer, so let's move on to John Anderson, your next answer. In this case, we'll be looking for any members of yes. If John Anderson is pointless, you leave here with that jackpot of £4,500. How many people said it? Is right. King Crimson was right. Took us all the way down to four. John Anderson takes us now down through the 20s into the teens, into single figures. Ooh, nine. Nine for John Anderson. So let's move on to your third and final answer, the one you thought was probably your best shot at a pointless answer. In this case, we were looking for tracks on Pink Floyd's Echoes, the best of Pink Floyd. You've gone for Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. If this is pointless, you've won yourselves that jackpot of £4,500. How many of our 100 people said it? Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. It's right. Your first answer, King Crimson, scored four. Your second, John Anderson, scored nine. Down we go through the single figures with the Pink Floyd track to one! Oh. <laughs> one! <laughs> We've had a rash of ones lately <laughs> in this last round. Uh, and I'm sorry, that I know how painful that must be. But I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer. So you don't win today's jackpot, but you do win today's uh, pointless trophy. So very, very well done for that. Yeah, very, very unlucky. Um, should we take you through the different answers and the different categories? There will be stuff you know here, I suspect, mm. but uh, within 60 uh -huh. seconds, it is tough. Now, members of Yes, their original drummer was Bill Bruford, who went on to join King Crimson. Jeff Downs, who was part of Buggles with Trevor yeah. Horn, who was scored three points. John Davison, who's been the singer of Yes um, since 2012. Tom Brislin, you could have had Benoit David, Billy Sherwood, Oliver Wakeman would have been a pointless answer. Rick Wakeman would have scored 15. Um, now, those tracks on Echoes, which I know you own. <laughs> Jog Band Blues, One of These Days, Sheep, the Fletcher Memorial <laughs> Home. <gasps> Sheep! Sheep! <laughs> what about what? that? Blimey, if there's another one called Jason. <laughs> uh, there are three other answers. Keep Talking Sorry and When the Tigers Broke Free were all pointless answers there. And uh, now bands which had Albums in that top 50. Emerson, Lake and Palmer were a pointless mm. answer. Gong, Tangerine Dream, The Soft Machine, uh, Camel, Can, Caravan, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention was a pointless answer. Uh, Magma, the Mars Volta, Tool as well. All of those are pointless answers. Very well done, if you said any of those. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thank you, Ian and Samantha. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £5,500. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>